Hey, I'm about to make some pasta sauce, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk to you about cylinders, and in particular, the surface area of a cylinder. Now, not the volume, not the number that's on the outside, that's the volume. The surface area, how much area there is on the outside, uh, in other words, how much metal it takes to, to make the can. All right, so we're gonna take the lid off and dismantle the can. See if we can figure out what the surface area is. So I'll take the lid off as quick as I can here. And set it aside for now. Okay, obviously a cylinder is made up of two circles. Let's get rid of the contents of the can here. We can turn it upside down and sideways. Cylinder is made up of two circles, right? One on the top, one on the bottom. Let's get the other one off too here while we're at it. Let's see how fast I can do this. There, so there's our two circles. Okay, one on the top, one on the bottom. We're gonna measure those in a second. Area of a circle, we can do that. Now, what shape is that side part if we unfold it and lay it flat? Well, you might have taken the label off of a can before, which I will do right now, if I can. Do it this way might be easier. It is a rectangle, right? That label is a rectangle. The side of the can is a rectangle. Now, how long does that label need to be? That's the key. If we want to work out the area of a rectangle, it's pretty easy. It's just the length of the rectangle times the height of the rectangle. The height of the rectangle is just the height of the can, right? How high that can is. The length of the rectangle is the key here to knowing how to figure out the surface area of a cylinder. That label obviously has to be big enough to go all the way around. It has to be the, the length of that rectangle. It has to be long enough exactly to match the circumference of the circle. Work out the circumference of the circle. So let's uh, let's actually do this. Let's take the label off there for a second. Let's grab some tin snips, something you normally don't have in a, in a kitchen, but I have here because I wanted to do this. So let's cut that apart. Try to do this without cutting myself. That would be good. Well, it's more or less flat. It's as flat as it's going to be here. Okay, you have your two pieces there, your three pieces, two circles and the rectangle. We need to measure this. The circles are, the circles are, I wonder where my ruler is. Oh man. Ah, where's the stupid ruler? Just a second. In the drawer. No, don't say in the drawer. I had the ruler there all ready to go, and there's no ruler there. I think I don't know. Okay, one second. All right, I have the ruler now. I can measure it much better now. Okay, so we have our, to recap, we have our two circles and our rectangle that we need to measure so that we can work out the surface area. The circles here, these circles happen to be pretty much exactly 10 centimeters in diameter. You know the diameter, you can work out the area. Easily enough, two of them. We need to know this. Now, this thing is 11 centimeters high. Now on the can, obviously that's measuring the height of the can, right, 11 centimeters. But the other direction, as we said, is it's, I mean, this is a slightly more than 30 centimeters here, right? Well, 31 or something, but we don't need to actually measure that because we can work that out just by knowing something about the circle. If we know the diameter of the circle, we can work out the circumference of that, right? So if we happen to be able to measure it here, it's about 31.4. I'm not actually measuring that. I know that it's supposed to be that because I know the diameter is 10. Anyways, how can we uh, put that all together? Uh, well, not very easy to put it together here, so we'll go to the whiteboard and try and work out the surface area that can. All right, so we're gonna calculate the surface area that can. As we saw when we cut the can apart, there's uh, three different pieces to that can. You have the top and the bottom, of course, and then you also have that side piece, right? This thing here that we uh, cut and uh, unfolded. Now, if you want to find the 
the area of those three pieces. Well, we know uh, for a circle, the area is area of that is pi r squared, all right? And the area of this is pi r squared. So together, those two circles are going to be two of those, two times pi r squared. Now, we measured the diameter, uh, this distance up here, we measured that to be 10 centimeters, all right? So we got that the radius has to be half of that, five centimeters, all right? Diameter 10 centimeters, radius 5 centimeters. The tricky part for a cylinder is finding this part right here, is finding the area of that part. As we looked at in the video, all we need is the two dimensions of this rectangle. You need that dimension. We can measure it once we unfolded it with the label, but it's going to be tough because a lot of times you want to know the surface area of a cylinder without actually cutting it apart. And you could take a piece of string and wrap it around and find how far around it is. But it's a lot easier to measure the diameter and then just calculate what the circumference needs to be. This, as long as you understand that, as long as you understand that this distance, the rectangle has to be long enough to go around the can. And as long as we can find that circumference, we're good. So let's write a formula down here. Actually, before we do that, let's write the other dimension on here. This was the height of the can, and that was 11 centimeters. I'm going to put height equals 11 centimeters. All right. Let's make a bit more space down here. So we have our surface area here. We've got 2 times uh, area of circle, Okay, area of the base area one of those circles plus we're gonna do area of side or label or lateral surface there's a lot of different things you can call it I'm just gonna say area of the side now area of the circle here this that is pi r squared pi times the radius times itself and then there's two circles so we need that too now as we said here or we alluded to in the video the area of that rectangle is the circumference times the height. So I could actually just write that. If I happen to know the circumference, I can just say it's circumference times height, right? Circumference times height. If you happen to know the circumference, if you don't happen to know the circumference, you can work it out. So let's just write this down so we don't lose it. And instead of this circumference here we're going to we're going to substitute how you can find circumference there you can find the circumference the circumference is just the diameter of the circle times pi right around a circle is pi times as much as it is across okay circumference pi times diameter times height so that's that's another way you can uh, find the how long that label needs to be how long the rectangle needs to be and then the third way is if you wanted to actually just start with the radius, all right? Because each of these formulas here, I got a formula here that has three different variables in it. It's got radius, circumference, and height. And sometimes you don't want three. This one even has three, radius, diameter, and height. But you can write it with only two variables if instead of, uh, instead of this diameter over here, you write two times the radius times height. Now, normally you don't see uh, you don't see things written as this formula. If you see this formula around, usually you don't see this pi 2 r. Usually mathematicians put things in a certain order and they would put the 2 first. So I'm going to write it the other way around here. I'll try and lassoing that thing and moving it a little. Take longer than doing. Let's just erase it. How about that? <laughs> uh, 2 pi times r. So those are the three ways. Right? You can use any one of those formulas as a starting point, or you can just use this and use your understanding. So, since I do have the diameter, I'm going to use that one. All right? So I'm going to rewrite it down here. Area is 2 pi r squared plus pi dh. Substitute the numbers in that I want. Let's make a bit more space here first. Substitute my numbers. So I'm going to replace the r with... 5 centimeters. I'm going to replace the D with 10 centimeters. I'm going to replace the H with 11 centimeters. And then the rest we're going to keep the same here. 2 times pi 
times 5 centimeters squared plus pi times 10 times 11 centimeters. Let's work out each of those things. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this first here. We have 11 times 10 times pi. Let's go to the calculator. Do, I don't know why I'm doing the second one first, but why not, eh? Well, 10 times 11, I don't even need to... I think I'll trust myself to know that's 110. But again, I'm going to use the pi button on the calculator. 110 times pi is 345, roughly. Now, I'm going to store that number on here. I'm going to store that as... I'm going to store that as s for side, if I can read this here. Store that as s for side. Then I can get the number back later without having to retype it in here. I'm going to write it down here too. 345.575. Roughly equal to 345.575 centimeters squared, because I'm multiplying centimeters by centimeters, and it's an area. First part of it here, the two circles. Well, I'll do this first. 5 squared is 25, and times 2 is 50. So again, I'm going to trust myself that I know that that's 50 times pi. Right? 157. So that's for both circles, because I had the 2 in there. Right? 157.0796. We'll put 4 down. Or we could round it off a little bit. I'm going to keep all of those numbers on the calculator, but I do want to put some rough numbers down here. 157.0796. Seven, nine. I think the next one is a six, and then there was a zero. So we'll uh, we'll leave it at that. I guess I had four decimals there and uh, three decimals on the other one. But uh, if I rounded the other one, I'd have to put a two there. In any case, that's centimeters squared as well because it's it's area. So we got those two things to add together. Now. It's best if you save all the numbers on the calculator, not round them off, and then use them again. So I have that one. I'm going to go plus. Now, the one I saved was under S for side. Okay, and then that's the total. All right, 502 point. Let's call it, I mean, my measurements weren't that accurate, so I'm going to go to the nearest whole number here. 502 point, or let's call it 503 even. 503. Really, as I was going down here, I shouldn't have even kept this many decimals along the way because my measured values were only accurate, you know, to two digits there. Um, but that's maybe beyond what we're looking at right now. That's the surface area, roughly 500 square centimeters of metal needed to make that can. All right, that's how you can do this. Start with a formula or just start, as we did up above here, with just from first principles, two circles and a rectangle. All right? Either way you do it, work your way down methodically and you'll you'll get there. All right? That's it.